Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Raghunath and I am coming to you from Canada. The purpose of I coming to you is to uh, help you in your preaching. Hi, um, I am a teacher of preaching and homiletics. And today's sermon is from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. I'm speaking about courage. And the portion of scripture is from verses 1, 6 through 9. And I'm reading from the messenger. We pray that these lectures or sermons, together with the, um, the script, would be of help to you. Thank you. Let this book of the Revelation be out of your mind. Ponder and determine on it. Um, ponder and meditate on it day and night. Make sure you are practicing everything written in it. Then you will get where you are going. Then you will succeed. Haven't I commanded you strength and courage? Don't be timid. Don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step of the way. Uh, I thought I would ask a question first before I start. Who do you think of when you think of courage? Give me a few names. Saul. Saul? Okay. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi. Who else? Heroic war soldiers. Heroic war soldiers. Heroes. Yes. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. Um, what about uh, Martin... Uh, Luther King Jr., is it? Mm-hmm. All these are great people in our history. There are many more. The passage I read to you here has to do more with spiritual courage. There's a difference between ordinary courage and spiritual courage. These are the words of the Lord to Joshua. Don't be discouraged. Be courageous. And I believe this passage can be applied to our lives every day. Be courageous. When you look at people who are courageous, how do they look? I think of the person that has cancer and is fighting. I think of the person that has to deal with that depression and anxiety great courage. I think of people with schizophrenia. My sister-in-law, Leela, died with schizophrenia. But she loved life and she loved our children. And although she uh, died, lived a short life, she was a courageous lady. So Courageous people don't always uh, are very successful people. They're ordinary people like us. When I think of a courageous person, I think of a wife who got enough beating from her husband and leaves to start life all over again. 
I think also of women who stay with their mate just for the children's sake. I think of uh, when everybody says, sit down, you stand up. I think of sick people who fight sickness but still afraid. My mom uh, raised six of us after my father died. She was 32. And we lived in the countryside and we had sugarcane and rice and things of that sort. It was very courageous. And you, you know what she used to say? She said the children don't grow up. That was her word of encouragement to her. I think every one of us could do with a little bit more of courage. All of us need courage. Uh, the dictionary says, it is the ability to control fear and be willing to deal with something that is dangerous, difficult, or unpleasant. The ability to do something that frightens one. The ability to do something that you know is difficult or dangerous. And yet, Idioms, one, two idioms are to be deaf to the threats. He has a heart like a lion. So tonight I want to talk about courage and encourage you. I need some courage myself. Every day I need courage to face the challenges of life. The first question I ask myself is, where does courage come from? Come from many places. Um, the human spirit is very courageous. We are made in the image of God. And someone can be very relaxed and very easy going until a problem arises, and suddenly they have become very courageous. God made man to be courageous, not to be weak, but courageous. Courage comes from facing a tragic situation. I have friends who have served in the ministry, and I'm thinking of more than one. But one of my friends, he has a child uh, that is handicapped. In fact, he comes from the church we attend, Ron, Ron Kidd great scholar, has written many books. And um, where does the courage come from? He lives a normal life. Where does the courage come from? Only God knows. It might come from a need. Sometimes courage comes from confronting a need, a problem. A mother might be left to take care of four children all alone. It takes courage. And they can turn out right alone. Courage also is a learned behavior. Courage is the opposite of fear, weakness, spineless. Timid, faint-hearted, scared. I have generally, uh, generally I've observed, if a parent has an inferiority complex, 
it is transferred over to the child. Sad. But that behavior of fear can be cut off. And the behavior of boldness can be learnt as fear was learnt with the help of God. The same way we can learn fear, the same way we can learn courage and boldness. I reject fear from my life. I reject inferiority complex from my life. I reject hopelessness from my life. I reject drugs from my life. I reject anger from my life. Joshua learned courage from Moses. You can't pick it up from a book. Mm, some of the disciplines that we see, for example, medicine, a lot of it has to do with mentorship. Seeing what your superior is doing and doing it under a uh, directive. A farmer, a uh, a cabinet maker and a lot of things in life is learned by following somebody who has done it before. That's the best way. Of course, books has a place. So he learned, Joshua learned um Courage as Moses confronted Pharaoh to say, let my people go. He wouldn't. But Moses persisted. And he said, let my people go. And he finally let Israel go. Joshua learned courage from that. He was in an internship program. Somebody said, uh, find somebody's briefcase that you could carry around who could mentor you. Just carry the briefcase. You would learn courage. Courage is related to thinking and meditating on positive things. You do not learn courage by looking at uh, uh, late movies <laughs> or reading negative pop books. You learn courage by reading men like Churchill. Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, and of course, the Word of God. I do not know of a resource in the world that I could pick up every day and it is always positive. I don't know of a book like that. The only book I know of is the Bible. You take the most difficult story of Job who lost everything. In the closing chapters of the book, he regained everything, plus he stood by it. So, uh, he only had five books to meditate upon. Uh, uh, Moses told him to meditate to think about all the time on these five books. We have 66 books now. And one of the good things to do is to learn to memorize scripture. 
So when you are confronted with a, a problem, you could repeat a scripture suitable to the situation. I get up many mornings and I get up quoting scripture because I am no match for the world's problems and the adversity that I would face that day. Constantly let your mind preoccupy itself with positive things, with the Word of God. And it will bring healing and sustenance to you. Courage, too, is a work of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The specific work of the Holy Spirit is to give you boldness in the faith. Once in the book of Acts, they prayed. Give us boldness, Lord. And the place was shaken. And they were filled with boldness to speak the word of God. It's difficult in some places to speak the word of God. To pray. You could be stoned or killed or martyred. It depends on the part of the world. And even in Canada, people are afraid to quote the word of God in, uh, because they're afraid they would offend somebody. But the word of God is powerful and it is the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to become bold. In myself, I am weak. But in the Spirit of God, I am strong. Courage also is a partnership between God and man. God by himself can't do anything. And man by himself can't do anything. We are weak. But God works through man to bring about uh, boldness in our lives. God, through the Holy Spirit, motivates us and makes us a great army together. God and us. We are a great army. Joshua and God is an army. Paul and God was an army. Jim Elliot, who was a missionary to the Auka Indians in South America, was martyred to death. And this is what he said. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep and gain which he cannot lose. His wife remained there after the death for another 20 years. And the two men who killed her husband, she led them to faith in Christ. And today, the whole tribe know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Where did that courage come from? I would say it comes from the Holy Spirit. And successful people are related. I don't know anybody who walks around like this, you know, the world is coming to an end, and suddenly they are millionaires. It doesn't happen. But I know a lot of people who have c courage and are successful people. Courage is sticking with it. 
it is standing up when everybody is sitting down. It is not running away. God is successful. And people who submit to God are successful. We are free today in part because one man stood up, Churchill, and he was in the minority in the House of Commons in England. Stood up with courage against Hitler. Courageous people are not, not always the majority. They are a lot of times the minority. People might laugh at you and say, who do you think you are? In the last chapter of the book of Joshua, when Joshua is giving his final speech, he told all of Israel, be courageous. Be courageous. And my word of encouragement to you tonight, just be courageous. Stick with the problems you have and trust God to give you the grace every day so you might be successful. And I know many of you here that are going through difficult times. Just stick with it. Just stick with it. Thank you. And the Lord bless you.